To find the greatest common factor of a set of numbers, you first have to list the factors of each number. We'll always start listing our factors with one. We'll list them in numerical order, and we'll list them in pairs. So for six, we would say one times six is six. Then when we go to two and ask ourselves, can two times something give us six? Yes, three, so two times three would give us six. The next number to try would be three, but we already have it in our list, so um, we are finished listing our factors of six. We'll do the same thing with 14. One times 14 is 14. Then when we ask, can two times something give us 14? Two times seven gives us 14. Then we have to try three, but three is not a factor of 14. Then we'll try four. Four times nothing gives us 14. Then we try five, but five, we can't multiply anything times five to get 14. If we try six, six again is not a factor of 14. And seven we have already, so we'll finish listing our factors of 14. To find the greatest common factor, we have to see what numbers they have in common, what factors they have in common. They both have ones and twos in common. None of the other factors match, so their greatest common factor is two. When you have to find the greatest common factor of three numbers, you list the factors of all three numbers, and then once again, you'll compare to see which ones they have in common. So for eight, we would have one times eight, and then two times four gives us eight, but we can't multiply anything times three to give us eight. So now we'll move to 12. One times 12 gives us 12. Two times six gives us 12. Three times four gives us 12. Four would be the next number to try, but it's already in our list, so that list of factors for 12 is complete. For 18, we would have one times 18. Two times nine gives us 18. Three times six gives us 18. We can't multiply four times anything to give us 18. We can't multiply five times anything to give us 18. Um, six we already have, so our list of factors for 18 is complete. Now that we have a, a little longer list of factors, I wanna go over with you how to double check to make sure you have the pairs listed correctly. This does not guarantee that you have all the factors listed, but it does guarantee that you have them listed in pairs correctly. If we go back up to eight, and we start on the outside and we look at one and eight. One times eight is eight. If we move to the inside pair, two times four is eight. So we have those pairs listed. For 12, we start on the outside, one times 12 is 12. Two times six is 12. Three times four is 12. On 18, one times 18 is 18. Two times nine is 18, and then three times six is 18. Now to find the greatest common factor, we can find all of their common factors. They all have ones, twos, whoops. They all have just ones and twos in common. If you notice, the four is in the list of factors for eight and 12, but not 18. And then none of the other, neither of the other two numbers have eight as a factor. So one and two are their only common factors. The greatest one of those is two. So the greatest common factor for eight, 12, and 18 would be two. It is possible to have a greatest common factor of one. It doesn't happen very often on the problems that you're given, but it is possible. Now for number 19, we're going to have to rely on more than just our basic facts to get us through these sets of factors. When you have the number 36, if one times 36 is 36, but since 36 is an even number, you know two is also a factor. You might not know two times what gives you 36, that's where the division comes in. You would have to do the long division and figure out that 18 is its matching factor. Then you go to three. Can three times something give you 36? Yes, 12. From your facts, you know three times 12 is 36. Can four times something give us 36? Yes, four times nine. Can five times something give us 36? No. When we ask ourselves, can six times something give us 36? Six times six? gives us 36. When you have a double like that, you list only one of the numbers, and since you're already repeating, your list should be complete as long as you didn't miss any pairs. When you go back and check, one times 36 is 36, two times 18 is 36, three times 12 is 36, four times nine is 36. 
Since 6 is in the middle by itself, that has to be a double. 6 times 6 is 36. Now we'll try the same thing with 54. 1 times 54. Then since 54 is even, we know 2 is a factor, but once again, you may have to do some scratch work to see how many times 2 goes into 54. That would be 27. Then when you get to 3 and you ask yourself, can 3 times something give us 54? You can't automatically just say no because nothing pops into your head. You have to divide 3 into 54 to see if it works. If it comes out with a remainder, then you know 3 is not a factor. But if it comes out evenly, then you know 3 is. And 3 times 18 actually gives us 54. And you say, can 4 times something give us 54? If you can't prove it mentally, you have to work it out on paper. Now when you divide 4 into 54, it does not go evenly. You would get a remainder, so 4 is not a factor. You say, can 5 times something give us 54? No, it can't because it doesn't end in a 5 or a 0. It ends in a 4. Can 6 times something give us 54? Yes, by our facts, we know 6 times 9 is 54. We can't multiply anything times 7 to get 54. We also can't multiply anything times 8 to get 54. 9 we already have, so that's our complete list of factors. Remember, you can go and check 1 times 54, 2 times 7, 3 times 18, and 6 times 9 should all equal out to 54. When you compare the list, they both have 1s, 2s, 3s, 6s, 9s, and 18s. Your greatest common factor would then be 18.